Welcome to Planetary Imaging, stacking with AutoStacker 2. More and more people are choosing AutoStacker for stacking their movie files of the planets, sun, and moon. AutoStacker reads in the movie file, stacks the frames, and writes out a picture file of a single stacked image. That stacked image can then be used by Registax or other software for image processing to make a much sharper picture. Running AutoStacker, we see we have two windows. The window on the left has three buttons numbered 1, 2, and 3. It is easy to guess that pushing these buttons in sequence is the way to go. The main roadblock is that the number 3 button is disabled. After doing number 1 and 2, you need to select some align points using the window on the right to enable the number 3 button. Now you know enough to get started. For the rest of this video, I'll take you through some of the settings that I understand, or think I understand. Remember that not everything you see in a YouTube video is true. Let's start with the drop-down menu items. You should briefly go through them to at least be aware of what is there. For some video files, I have to use a Force DBear option under the color menu because the Auto Detect option chooses the wrong one. On the advanced menu, there is an experimental option. It will bring up another window which has some instructions to hopefully explain what the features are. Before pushing button number one, notice this limit frames text. Clicking on it brings up a small window which will allow you to cut out some frames at the beginning and or end of the movie file. You will normally not use this feature. We push button number one and open our movie file. Now we see frame number one in the right window. Using the slider we can scroll through all the frames. Pushing the play button is useful to see how turbulent the sky was. The planet is centered in the window even though it bounced around during capture. If you have a moon off to the side you may not want the planet to be centered. You can move the planet with the mouse while holding down the shift key. The offset will be displayed here. You can reset the offset to zero by clicking on the displayed offset. In addition to pushing button number one to open a file, you can also drag a file from Windows Explorer to either window of AutoStacker. AutoStacker will do batch processing if you select more than one movie file. You can learn a lot by reading the tooltips that come up when you hover over parts of AutoStacker. For example, hovering over button number one gives us a tooltip that says you can also drag and drop files or folders with BMP, TIFF, FIT, JPG, or PNG images to this form. In the right window, we have these two sliders to control the amount of cropping we want AutoStacker to do. Cropping is a good idea when you have large amounts of black sky surrounding a relatively small planet image. AutoStacker will then run faster. The text in the upper left corner of the picture can be turned on and off with this details checkbox. Just below button number one, we have the image stabilization group. AutoStacker has two different ways to detect image movement and we have to decide if we want to select surface or planet. The planet option uses center gravity, but usually only works on planets. It will work on the sun or moon if the field of view is large enough to fit it all in. As long as you have dark sky surrounding it, it should work. You can use surface on planets, but it will take longer. The center gravity method appears to work in a split second. Notice how the planet is already stabilized when I select planet. Selecting surface and we are no longer stabilized. Stabilization has now been added to the list of things to do. If you want to know how the center gravity thing works, I've put a link in the video description to another video which shows how to calculate the center of mass. For the planet image, the pixel brightness is the mass, and the calculation is done twice once for the horizontal and once for the vertical. Furthermore, the pixel brightness is considered to be either 0 or 1. Otherwise, bright spots on the planet, such as a polar cap, would count more than dark spots. The brightness levels in the video file go from 0 to 255. A threshold is calculated, say a brightness value of 20, and everything above that is counted as planet, and everything below that is counted as sky. If you uncheck dynamic background, you can specify the threshold value yourself. When using the surface option, we get a green rectangle on our image. You can change the size of it by pressing the 1 through 9 keys when that window has focus. 
just click on the top bar of the window to give it focus. The idea is to select a distinct feature. You can move the rectangle with control click. A larger rectangle will mean longer computation. Select a feature near the center so it will be more likely to be included in all the frames. The tooltip for the improved track box says slower but sometimes more accurate tracking for jumpy recordings. My guess is that the image in the rectangle is being slid around, left, right, up, down, while comparing it to the next image to see where it matches the best. When checking improved tracking, the amount of sliding around is increased to allow finding the proper match when you have greater movement from frame to frame. This can be due to a wobbly mount or low number of frames per second. To be sure I get the best results, I always check this box and just bite the bullet on computer time, even though it possibly isn't necessary. With the surface option, we're given this expand versus crop choice. When recording a sun or moon video, the target will drift around during capture. Parts of the moon will appear in every frame and other parts will only appear in some of the frames. If you choose expand, then you'll end up with a larger image one that contains every part of the moon captured, even the parts that were only caught in one frame. If you choose cropped, then you'll end up with a smaller image, but every part of the image will be stacking the same number of frames. Next down we have some options under the heading of Quality Estimator. The purpose of estimating the quality of each frame is so we can sort them and then only stack the very best. The reason the images don't all have the same quality is due primarily to atmospheric turbulence. If we check the details checkbox, we see that there is already a quality value assigned to each frame, at least if gradient is selected. Remember that I did not write AutoStacker and I don't actually know how it calculates the quality estimate. What I'm going to tell you is not how it works. The actual algorithm is more complicated but this simple-minded method should be helpful for deciding which options to use. Bad seeing is a lot like bad focus. The image becomes blurred and the contrast is decreased. Imagine you look at the brightness value of the pixels for just one row through the center of the picture. Compare the brightness value of each pixel to the previous one. Add up all the changes taking the absolute value of the difference. If the pixel brightness value is five more than the previous one, that would count the same as if it was 5 less than the previous one. Perhaps, to eliminate negative numbers, you would square the difference and add up the square of all the changes. The sum of all these changes will be higher when the seeing is good. Bad seeing tends to make everything look the same, and good seeing results in a more contrasty picture, which has bright pixels next to less bright pixels. This sum of differences, then, become a quality estimator which can be used for ranking all the frames. When the gradient option is selected, there is a noise robust value for us to choose. Hovering over it, we get the message, gradient quality estimator, number represents scale of details, but can easily be fooled by noise if set too low. The noise robust value can be between two and eight. If your image is color and requiring debare, then the robust value can only be 4 or 6. With my simple-minded way of calculating the quality estimate, we compare groups of pixels rather than individual pixels, and this setting selects the size of the pixel group. Use a small noise robust value if you have a picture with little noise. If you used max gain and your capture looks a bit noisy, then use a higher value. When planet COG is selected for image stabilization, then you can choose either edge or gradient for the quality estimator. Choose edge when part of the planet's edge is not sharp due to being able to see the terminator. This is always the case for Mercury and Venus and possibly Mars when not at opposition. You then need to check the regions that have the sharp edges. In this picture of Venus we have sharp edges from here to here so we would check these boxes here and uncheck these. Presumably, AutoStacker will then look for sharpness in these regions. The frames that have poor quality won't have edges as sharp as the high quality frames. When edge is not selected, you then have this local versus global option. When you select local, then the quality will be assessed for each region associated with each align point, 
and then will be sorted separately. For example, suppose we have 10,000 frames in our movie file, want to stack the best 20%, and that we select just four align points. If we select local, then AutoStacker will sort all 10,000 frames based on the quality of just the top left region and stack the best 20%. It will then do the same for each other region. At the end, it will then create a mosaic from the four smaller images. Another way to say this is that AutoStacker considers your 10,000 frame movie file as four separate crop movie files, each with 10,000 frames. It ends up with four stacked images that are then stitched together to form a single mosaic. The advantage of using the local option should be obvious. When watching the movie play, we notice ripples or waves of atmospheric turbulence. Part of the planet is sometimes sharp, while the rest is not. So for the red spot on Jupiter, you want to sort the frames based on the quality around the red spot, and likewise for each other part of the picture. You should always use local. The ability to select global is included in case you get some artifacts along the seams where the individual regions are stitched back together. If that happens, then it is most likely caused because you have align points that are too small, so I would try fewer align points first to try to fix the problem. To experiment with different quality estimator settings, try using only the best 5% of the frames. By using the best 5%, you're more likely to see the effect of a quality estimator setting compared to using the best 50%, for example. After choosing the settings we want here in this region, we press the number 2 Analyze button and wait until we see Done here. Now we move on to the settings that affect how the stacking is done. The first one we come to is Reference Frame. The reference frame is needed to calculate the X and Y offset for each alignment point for each frame. The offset changes from frame to frame due mostly to atmospheric turbulence but also because the center of gravity or surface image stabilization techniques are not perfect. The first checkbox says last stack is reference but I can't check it. The tooltip says it only works when stacking twice of course. The next checkbox says auto size quality based. If you uncheck this box, you get an option to select the number of frames. My guess is that AutoStacker will combine this number of frames using only the center of gravity or surface image stabilization technique for the purpose of making a reference frame. It may be worth the effort of stacking twice, so you can use the last stack is reference option to try and get a tad better stack. I always leave this box checked. This quality graph appears after doing the Analyze step. There are two things plotted. The quality of the frames as they were captured is shown in gray. The quality of the frames after being sorted is shown in green. The top slider on the preview window moves us to the frames as before, but now the frames are sorted based on their quality estimate. The text in the upper left shows us the frame number of the sorted frame, and to the right it also tells us the frame number from the original capture. Note that you can move the slider one frame at a time with the arrow keys if you first click on the slider and also keep the mouse pointer over the slider control. Sometimes you'll see a bit of red along the bottom of the quality graph. Once I had half of my frames having zero quality. This can happen if your movie file has duplicate frames. AutoStacker will mark the quality of a duplicate frame as zero. Up here, we see we can output our stacked image as a TIFF, PNG, or FIT file by selecting the radio button of our choice. Next, we are presented with eight edit boxes to allow us to create multiple stacks. For example, if I enter 10, 20, 40, and 80 in the frame percentage boxes, I'll get four stacked images. The percentage will be reflected in the file names or folder names where they are saved. Likewise, you can enter the number of frames to stack in these boxes in the top row. Note that if you control click on the quality graph, you will zero out all the boxes except the first one in the second row, which will be given the value of the percentage of where you clicked. Simply clicking on the quality graph has different behavior. You must hold down the control key while clicking to get the frame percentage box to be changed. How many frames should we stack? 
What percentage of frames should we stack? I'll tell you my thinking at this time, but please experiment for yourself. The idea that I have found what is optimal is absurd. AutoStacker makes it easy to experiment by giving us these eight boxes. I have noticed that if you stack 500 frames and also stack 5,000 frames, that the two stacked images appear about the same before sharpening. When applying wavelet sharpening, there comes a point where further sharpening just makes it look worse. You can apply much more sharpening with the 5,000 frame stacked image before this happens. So stacking 5,000 frames can be better than stacking 500 frames. So where do you draw the line? Just looking at this quality graph, you would want to select maybe 10%. These 10% are better than all the rest, and you don't want to throw in all these less perfect images. It also depends on how quickly this green line drops. If it stays fairly high until way over here before dropping, then that means you have a large percentage that are all about as good as the best. Of course, if the green line drops much earlier, then you only have a few that are about as good as the best. I take all this into consideration. I want to stack at least a thousand frames and preferably 2,000 to 4,000 or more. With a quality graph like this, I would select 95% of them if it was made with only 2,000 frames. If it was made with 20,000 frames, then I would select 10% or 20%. Because AutoStacker makes it easy to experiment, I have found that sometimes it makes little difference if you stack 20% or 80%. And other times, 20% is much better than 80%, and also the other way around. Recently, I've noticed that Saturn prefers a higher stack percentage than other planets but that may be due to me capturing Saturn at a lower histogram setting. So be alert to notice if the histogram of the capture affects how many frames to stack. The normalized stack option exists when planet center gravity is selected. I use it to give me a desired percent histogram. I normally capture with a low histogram so I can get more frames. The normalized stack option will brighten my stacked image. Be careful not to choose something too bright, say 95%, because you need some room for wavelet sharpening which increases your percent histogram. Using the normalized stack option will also ensure that all your stacks for an animation will be uniform in brightness. I always use normalized stack. The sharpen checkbox allows you to get an extra stacked image that has been slightly sharpened. It will have the same file name but with underscore conv appended to it. The reason this feature was added was to make it easy to find the best stacked image out of a group. For example, suppose you have 10 movie files. You would end up with 10 stacked images. Now you want the best one, but it's hard to tell which stacked image is best. You pretty much have to process all of them to see how much detail is in each. With the sharpen checkbox checked, you end up with the same stacked images as before, but also another 10 that are partially sharpened. Hopefully you can now tell which is best, and you would then go process the corresponding unsharpened one. The sharpened images were not intended to be used for further sharpening. Many people do use the sharpened images though without any ill effect. If you check sharpening, you will get this blend draw in for X% percent option. I never used the sharpen feature, but if I did, I would select 0% for the blend. That way you get the full amount of sharpening. I don't live in the desert, so my images are never that sharp to begin with. The little bit of sharpening that AutoStacker gives when this option is selected is never too much. If it becomes too much, then you can reduce the amount of sharpening you end up with by blending back in a proportion of the unsharpened image. This may not be what the blend option was intended for, or how it works, but that is how I view it. Next we have RGB Align. RGB stands for Red, Green, Blue. Checking RGB Align makes it so you don't need to waste a lot of time doing RGB Align in Registacks. AutoStacker's version of RGB Align is also better. It even aligns to sub-pixel accuracy. The reason your colors need to be aligned is because the atmosphere bends different colors different amounts. Without color alignment, you'll end up with a blue tinge on one side of the planet and an orange tinge on the other. AutoStacker gives us some control over the output file names. The stacked files are saved in the same folder as the movie files, or if you check Save in Folders, then new folders are created in the same folder as the movie files. 
Checking save in folders will cause n folders to be made where n is the number of non-zero boxes here. So it is possible to have up to eight new folders being made. For example, suppose I enter 2000 and 4000 for the number of frames to stack and also enter 10, 20, and 50 for the frame percentage to stack. Then I would end up with these five new folders. The output file name is the same as your movie file, but of course with a different extension. For example, your movie file has AVI, but your stacked image has TIF for the file name extension. In addition, the output file name has information about the quality estimator and the number of align points. If you selected gradient for the quality estimator, then the output file name would include an underscore G along with the noise robust value. If you selected edge for the quality estimator, then you would get an underscore E followed by eight zeros or ones, which represent which of the eight edge checks boxes were checked. For example, suppose I use this, I would get E underscore one zero 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 one 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 as part of the file name. It appears that it starts at the top and goes clockwise with one representing the check boxes and zero the unchecked boxes. The file name also ends with underscore APX, where X is the number of align points. If you don't select save in folders, then the file name also has the information about the number of frames that were stacked and the frame percentage that was stacked, as this information was previously stored in the folder name. The prefix option allows you to prepend some text to the beginning of the output file name. Suppose you start with a movie file with this file name and you enter Jupiter for the prefix, then you might end up with this for your output file name. The Jupiter part is due to the text that you entered for the prefix. You get the underscore for free. The AS underscore P20 means that 20% of the frames were stacked. If you selected save in folders, then this would be missing from the file name and the file would be stored in a folder named AS underscore P20. The G6 means you selected the gradient quality estimator with 6 for the noise robust value. The AP12 means you use 12 align points. If you selected drizzle, then you also get underscore drizzle 15 or underscore drizzle 30 included in the file name. If you select resample 2x, you get resample 20 included in the file name. If you select simple file name for raw, then your file name won't have all the extra bits which tells you how the stack was made. This version of AutoStacker has a More File Options button, which brings up a window with some options of what to do after the stack is made. It says Experimental, so I will leave it for you to play with. Under advanced settings, we have this HQ refine option. The tooltip says finer alignment, but also a bit slower, usually worthwhile on good data. I always keep it checked, but I unchecked it once to see what the difference might be. I noticed that the time for image alignment was cut in half by unchecking the box, but this is such a small percentage of all that it does, it really doesn't make sense to not use HQ refine, even with a slow computer. Next we have drizzle and we can select off 1.5x or 3x. The idea behind drizzle is that it is possible to get a higher resolution image than what was captured because we have many frames of the same object and the object is moving around a little from frame to frame. In practice, this doesn't work for planetary imaging. If you select 3x, your image will be three times bigger in both width and height, but it won't be that much different than using no drizzle at all and resizing the final sharpened image to be three times larger. What this means is that if you use 3x, then you'll probably want to shrink the final sharpened image back to the original size when you're done. AutoStacker only has the 3x algorithm. When you select 1.5x, AutoStacker will use the 3x drizzle and resize it in half to give you the 1.5x drizzle. I use drizzle when my image is small, like Mars, or if I'm using a smaller telescope. This way I have something larger on my screen when I'm applying wavelet sharpening, and I can see what I'm doing. When finished, I often resize it back down because it looks artificially enlarged. The tooltip for resample 2x says, resample frames during stacking only for monochrome recordings. 
It seems to work for color though. The stack button is disabled until you add align points. You control the align points with this left side of the preview window. Most of it is self-explanatory. You can add align points by clicking on the image. You control the size of the rectangles with the controls in this region. You can create a custom size rectangle by selecting manual draw and clicking twice on the image. You can delete a single align point by right clicking near the red dot of the one you want to eliminate or delete all of them with the clear button. Auto Stacker will automatically place align points using these controls here. You can see what the min bright value does by playing with it. Setting it to 100 on this image causes few align points to be placed in only the brightest part of the image. Setting it to 10 causes many more to be placed. One mistake many people make is to use align points that are too small. Imagine you were given this tiny part of this one frame and asked to align it to the reference image. It is like doing a jigsaw puzzle and you pick up a piece that is all blue. The reference image is on the box the puzzle came in and it has a large blue sky. If the jigsaw puzzle has large pieces, it makes it possible to place it on the reference image. If you're new to Autostacker, then here's what works for me. Check the Replace checkbox so every time you press the Place AP Grid button, it will start from scratch. Keep trying different sizes until you end up with between 10 and 20 align points. You may need to manually add a point or two to make sure you have every bit covered. If you have a sharp image with lots of detail, then you can use smaller align points. I've stacked with only four align points when doing Mars with bad seeing. Help Auto Stacker do its job by giving it align points that aren't too small. This is the end of this video. After Auto Stacker, you will want to sharpen your stacked image. I have two videos on using Registacks. One video shows how to use the wavelet controls, and the other video shows a few of the other image enhancing controls of Registacks. If you want to learn more about how histograms can be used for capturing and processing, check out the histogram video. Click on the bottom right for a list of all my planetary imaging videos.